Hello, good day and welcome to another edition of Sports Check here on Ghana Web TV. My name is Daniel Odo and as usual I bring you another exciting interview. Today my guest is someone who played for the national team. At the peak of his career he was feared by many strikers. Uh, they describe him as a bully and someone you cannot uh, easily uh, overtake. He was uh, affectionately called Sam Foyou Johnson. Played his football at Anderlecht and also made a name for himself in Turkey where he played for different clubs. Today I speak to him about the situation of the Ghana Football Association. We'll also talk about his career and some of the highs and lows of his career. We'll talk about his new business which is the uh, Body Fitness Centre which is in Dansuma where we are presently and what he hopes to achieve with this enterprise. Stay with us, we're back after the break. You're welcome back from the break. You're still here on Sports Check on Ghana Web TV. My name is Daniel Odo. Today, my guest is Sam Foyo Johnson, who played for the national team for many, many years and became a household name. He's joined us today for an interesting conversation on the state of Ghana football and his aspirations. Foyo, thank you very much for your time. You're looking my very pleasure. young. <laughs> <laughs> what is the secret? Uh, it's by his grace. Really? Yeah. Wow. We thank God. How many years now since you... Retired from active mm, football? About 10, 10, 10 years now. Wow. Do you miss it? Yeah. You Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> what do you miss? Uh, especially, you know, the togetherness with friends, having fun, yeah. you know. Sometimes you miss it. And, uh, but, you know, it's, it's part of life. Yeah. So you need to, you know, adjust yourself. Wow. To, yeah. But that's good. Um, these days, what do you do? I mean, um, we know you've stopped playing active football. We saw you doing a lot of um, TV work during the World Cup. But on a regular day now that you've retired, what's, what is your normal day like? Yeah, since you, are, you know where I am now, you yeah. know, I try to come here to check what is going on and how things are going and just managing it. Okay. Yeah. And how is it going? Ah, but his grace is going well. It's going well. Yeah, it's not easy. It's not easy, yeah. You know, it's not easy, you know, working with a lot of people. Yeah. You always need to make sure things are working. You can see that, I mean, somebody is here trying to yeah. put things together because some people are giving you money, so you need to get everything ready for them. Yeah. It's not easy to manage, but once you are in the, the blood is in you, mm -hmm. you know, it's about sports. Yeah. So you need to sacrifice and okay. do more. Well, if you care to know, we are the Body Fitness Center, which is owned by uh, Sam Johnson, uh, something that he put up after he retired from football. It's a, gym, a, gym, a gymnasium in Dansoman where a lot of people come to keep fit. Did you always set out to be a footballer? I mean, how did the, how did the journey start? <laughs> the journey started a very long time. Mm. Uh, not in this way, like a business, but as passion. I have a passion for football. And you know, when I'll be sitting down watching TV, you know, that black and white thing. Yeah. And then maybe has playing against Olympics or anything. That time they were showing these television matches. And after the game, I also go on the field. Stealing my dad, uh, stealing my dad uh, socks. socks, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Doing socks ball, things like that. Going to, even if the game closed at five or six, yeah. I will make sure I need one socks to go and do the <laughs> socks ball to, to play at least 30, sec, uh, 30 minutes or one hour mm -hmm. just to play. You know, so I started from there with the passion that I have for the game. Gradually, and then uh, Thomas Quay, we are neighbors, and uh, he, took, he was playing Canaries and Babies at that time. So he took me there, and <laughs> unfortunately, when we got there, there is no goalkeeper. So it's like, okay, I'll be in the post. <laughs> <laughs> so they would do shootings. Okay. That, were, that time we do shootings a lot. Okay. In the course we do shootings a lot. So I'll be in the post, they shoot, I'll take the ball, they do, I'll do this, they do, I'll do that. Not knowing Broadway, our the team, was, the team manager, he was standing somewhere far, you know, that time there was a lot of bush, you know, the bush is too much, not like now that Indafa is yeah. open. So he'll be standing there, under the tree, then he's watching. So he, he came in and he was like, okay, defenders go here, uh, midfielders go here, strikers go here, goalkeepers. So I was going to the defense, defensive side and he's like, hey, my friend, yeah, go keeper. and stand there, you're a goalkeeper. I said, no, I'm not coming here to, to be a goalkeeper. <laughs> I came here to play. 
I you know, because I want to play. I don't want to stay in the post. Uh, ball will come one. Maybe at the end of the game, only two or three balls will come to you, and then that's it. He said, no, you'll be a goalkeeper. Charlie, I'm crying, but, you know, uh -huh. you need to be there. So I went there, and I started with the goalkeeping. So one day... How, so how long were you a goalkeeper for? Um, I think for five years or something. Four years. Really? Yeah. I think one day we were going to play. Uh, so this was under 12 or under 14? Under 12. Under 12. Yeah, we were going to play and he was like, okay. Our boys, were, they were playing Muche, this is Muche, yeah. Muche, this thing. So he's like, okay, you today go and play. Then the reserve goalkeeper will be in the post. As soon as he get there, no, I was the man of the match on that game. Wow. So after that, it's like, okay, you, you are here to play. So, <laughs> you know, continue with your play. And that is where the whole journey so started. did you start as a when you you left the goalkeeping and your first game as a an outfit player? Yeah, did as you a, play as a defender? As a defender. As a defender. As a defender. Yeah. Wow. But I learned most of the things I'm, I I did. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I I learned it through course. Okay. Yeah, because in course, you know, the passion is there. So the people who also taught us how to do the thing, they they, they know it. They know the game. Yeah. You know. Now we have something we have something you know pass and move if you pass you need to move yeah you know so those basic yeah these things is there a lot and that is where we all you know move from and we we go where we are now so from coats and then you went to sunny the... halifax okay i went to sunny halifax and then from sunny halifax sunny halifax after i played i think three years or something in sunny halifax and so you you had to move on and went to I what? went I, I came I went to Accra of Oak. Oak. Yeah. Wow. And then from Accra of Oak, uh, I went to Greece. Greece. Uh, so your first your first trip European uh, this thing Greece. is uh, Greece, yeah. And how was, Greece. how was that? How did your family uh, feel? Yeah, you know, everywhere, thank God, everywhere I go, I put something there. Not something bad, I put something good there before yeah. uh, I leave. Uh, and I thank God for that. I went there, I was playing as a striker. So you play yes. goalkeeper, defender, yeah. striker. There I was playing as a striker. striker. Yeah, and you know the funniest thing is that the president came to um, Australia. We were playing like, like Australia. I was striking for the national team, but that time we don't have the a lot of uh, attackers. And I think later part they brought in uh, are you four or Felix Abad? They brought some players, mm -hmm. so I need to come back and be with Afododu. In the defense and the last game the president came there you know and the way i was playing it's like wow but he's buying me as a striker <laughs> not, there, not a defender you know so it's like okay Charlie, if you, are a, you are a striker you are not a defender you are a striker mm -hmm. so there i'm a striker of course i play striking route so it's not a problem for me to play there or whatever and i went there and Things went well for me. Uh, I scored some important goals in the in the in the team. I was there with uh, EB again, okay. Afododu, mm. and then later on uh, Peter Foriku also came yeah, uh, came around. Yeah. And so we were we were as a team there. We were all, I mean we feel, we all, we always feel at, feel, feel at home. Yeah. So there is no problems. A year later, <laughs> I was uh, underlet. Also, I think I came for. European uh, African Cup, and okay. then this was in which year? Uh, ninety six. Ninety six. Ninety six. Yeah. Okay. Ninety six South Africa. Mm -hmm. So after the European Cup, then Anderlecht also won me. So our manager came to uh, Greece. Greece. Okay. And then he also came. I had a very. I was striking. He was coming to buy me as, as a defender, but I was striking. But we, they have the one this tall guy, and. They, I thought they do all of the they can't hold the guy, you know. It's just any long ball is dangerous for us, yeah. and we were leading one zero. So I said, Charlie, let me come back and get this guy. So I was with this guy, all the boss, and then the man said, okay, he's a defender. <laughs> <laughs> and then from then on, I also went to Anderlecht and started the European another, another I mean, adventure. adventure. But let 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 I, I will bring I'll come back to your time at Anderlecht, but I want to explore your time at Heart of Oak. How many years did you play for Hartford? I played as uh, five years. Five years? Yeah. And Hartford were a very, very big team at the time. Well, Hartford is still a big team, but at that time they were winning uh, a lot of titles. Yeah, at that time. Who were some of your uh, playmates? Wow. 
les chiamocurables de Kuma, Benadje, euh, Lit, Anite Soa, Thomas Kwe, euh, I think, euh, Eben Lubate, yeah, Nanabe, Chris, euh, Ezekiel Alemou, euh, a lot, a lot, a lot. The, I think the, the I, 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 I'm... Atana Sakios who came, okay. Santrofi, uh, who again? Joe Dwe. Joe Dwe also, I think. Uh, Joe Dwe also was there. <laughs> Mohamed Polo also came in later, but, you know, if you come and help us. Uh, uh, yeah, I hear all these say, big players. Hear, I, I, Joe Addo. Joe Addo, yeah. Joe Addo was the Senegal. Senegal also is the... Uh, Osmanu Saki, Osmanu Idi. Uh, yeah. yeah you, you have a lot of uh, teammates. Yeah, uh, for five yeah. years, you would have a lot of, <laughs> yeah. a lot of uh, uh, teammates. I, I, I've read somewhere that you say Mohamed Polo was the greatest player you, in the history of Hartupo. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. You think so? Yeah, I think so. How good was he? Most of us you didn't know, watch him play. How good know, was he? Those ones, I didn't see them. Okay. So the one I saw is the one I'm witnessing. So I can talk and talk confidently that he is the best. The best Unless in the somebody, history of Heart of Ogo, the best in the history of Ghana that you know? I can put across. I can put across because I saw it. You know, as played against Kotoko. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The day I, I saw that man as a great player, as played against Kotoko. And I was sitting watching the game, you know, uh, ball boy. Okay. <laughs> can I listen to this ball boy? And has passed the ball first. So as soon as I, I pass the ball to him, it turns back like he's going to give it. Then it turns again. And all the Kotoko players were out. I mean, he finished all of them. Yeah. And where he was standing, and he gave the ball, banana. And the ball went straight to Aipe leg. He just controlled the ball. And he's, you know, he spoiled that ball. Wow. And Polo was like, who is this? Like, how can you spoil this kind of I'm chance? Giving you like 80, 90 percent, yeah. you know, chance because all the defenders are behind him, yeah. about five, six meters behind him. How how good was Shamokwe too? Many people say if he had lived long, he'd have been one of the greatest players. Yeah, you know, Shamo is <laughs> wow. You can't predict him. You can't predict Shamo. You can't. <sighs> You can't. He never do some. He never uh, uh, that did normal things. You always do things that your mind, you, you have no idea. So Shamo is different person when it comes to football. Is where you can you don't things that you don't understand in football. That is what Shamo do. He must have been very talented. Yeah. Things that you don't expect in football, Shamo will do it. Wow. And that is the difference between Shamo and any other player that I know. May he so rest in peace. Yeah. So now let's talk about your time at Anderlecht. So how many years did you spend at Anderlecht? I played two years. Two Anderlecht. years. Did you enjoy your time there? Yeah, I enjoyed my time there, but the later part I didn't. I didn't. What happened? I didn't because uh, uh, the coach, the one who bought me, after one year he left. Okay. So the one who came in, was you know this color thing yeah so when white man do something is for the team but when black man do something is <laughs> you stand alone yeah. and i can't i don't feel it so i'm always you know yeah not well, happy. i'm not happy i'm trying to move out but how can i move out i have another two years contract with them how can i go you know and i don't want to move from here to there you know i need to yeah yeah continue and go forward. So, God so good. The national team will call. I will come. I will do what I have to do. I will go back. So that one is relieving me a little bit when I come. Mm -hmm. I can see friends who yeah. have fun, yeah. do this, and then if I go, I go back to That's Lions. Cool. Then you know. <laughs> so when Yao called me and said, Charlie, and that time I'm with Yao, uh, uh, Baba Yaro, Celestine, yeah. Nigeria. Yeah. Uh, I'm with him, and then bike and Olise. I'm with these people, so sometimes we don't see. So Baba Yaro left, and then Yao also, and then Isaac Asari. Oh, yeah. Isaac also left. So it's like me and them. 
only to uh, that uh, bike that Ulysses bro uh, junior brother mm -hmm. and uh, uh, James Obiora. So and they are young 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 players. So they don't see them as one of them, yeah. you know. So it's only me there, you know. They are just punching me, but I'm like, ah, well, guys. So I don't have that. Yeah. So it's, I started dropping. Down, yeah. yeah, I started dropping. So when I came to uh, Burkina, 98. Okay. okay. So I'm like, when y'all called me, say Charlie, I said, buddy, hurry up, oh <laughs> Do quick, do quick. I'm coming. I'm coming. And the person comes. So whoever is coming to pick me, if any kind of let the person come and come and deal, I mean, talk to them. I'm done, because you know why. Yeah. I've been calling you, telling you what is going on. So my heart is not here anymore. I want to go. And unfortunately, I mean, God's so good. You went to take. I went to take. So what you faced in underlight was what? Would you, did you describe it as racism at the at the time? Yeah, yeah. That is how I describe it. Because if 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 I did it. And it's not for the team, but if somebody did it, it's for the team. You don't like me. Mm -hmm. Why me? Okay. Because I'm doing what I have to do. You know. Yeah. So if you don't appreciate what I'm doing and you are trying to frustrate me to bring me down, I won't. I won't show it to you. Mm -hmm. That one, look, you won't see me like, you know, making myself like. Uh, no, I will do my job. Because I know one day will yeah. come, and yeah. if that day come, I will make sure I will take it. Because if I'm, I'm not doing, I'm not putting in any percent. When I came to the African Cup, I mm -hmm. can't do anything. Yeah. And then what will happen? Mm -hmm. It's going to be my downfall. So yeah. I have to make that character. That is me. So I always tell the players, even if you don't play, put in any percent. One day will come. Yeah. That day, if it comes. You need to utilize that uh, chance. So you went to it. Turkey after the 98 Nations Cup. Nations Cup. The 98 Nations Cup was a heartbreak for... Heartbreak a for the... A, a heartbreak for Ghanaians. Yes. Heartbreak. How do you remember that day? Yeah, that day was... You know, it's, it's bad. Because it's, you know, it's just a stone throw, yeah. you know. So we need to do something. And it's unfortunate we didn't do anything at all. We came out from the group stages, which yeah. is... Which is bad. So far as you are talking, you're talking about football, Ghana. Yeah. It's, it's bad, but it's one one of those things. So we, but we we felt so bad about that. Nobody is happy. But the treatment also there, you know, the things that we faced before the games. Okay. It's very bad. It's very bad, and we deserve to uh, come out. We deserve to come out. But you know, how, what can we do? Okay. You are Ghanaian, so you can't. Mm -hmm. I mean change your nationality even if you change your nationality you can't change the blood because blood in you is ghana so <laughs> no matter what you do you know you have the family is here everything is here so you you, you come back it was a very ba bad experience right. very bad experience now the preparation was very bad yeah a lot of things happened before the yeah. tournament now let's talk about your time in Turkey. a lot of people remember you for your time in Turkey. Um, how good was your time in Turkey? Uh, my time in Turkey is the best. So which club did you I, go to first? You played for only one club. I in played. I played um, Gaziantep. Okay. Gaziantep Sport. Okay. For the first year. So would you describe your career as a successful one? Yeah. You are, you were happy at the end of your career. You said I'm done very a good happy. Job. Though I'm not where I want to be, mm -hmm. but where I am, a lot of people have been in this business. They never got there. Yeah. So thank God. I've been where I was. Yeah. That's, that's, that's really true. Let's talk about some matters back home in Ghana. And now we're looking towards a lot of the ex-players to give us direction in terms of our football. There's a ban on football activities. The GFA is um, in crisis and the government is trying to rebuild football. Do you think the government is doing the right thing, trying to, um, if you like, clean up the mess? The mess supposed to be clean a long time ago. I thank God the evidence is there, so now we are cleaning the mess. Okay. You know, and uh, how am I going to start and how am I going to end? The cleaning up is good, mm. but how quick? How quick, yeah. It's going to be so that the guys also who, who took this business as their life, mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> this thing, they won't go angry. Yeah. Because that is how much cry are they paying them? 
You've been paying them 400 and 500, they are suffering. Yeah. Talk less of getting nothing again, you know. So I'm happy it's going this way, but how quick it's going to be so that we clean up and then put measures. Yeah. Put, if somebody did something which is wrong and it's supposed to be at the law court, you need to put the person there. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Now, recently, Essen has been talking about the fact that, and I bring that because she said the cleaning up should have been done a long time ago. Yeah. In 2014, we know what happened in Brazil, the Black Stars, money flown to Brazil. And now, Essen says the commotion that happened in Brazil has been vindicated because of the expose that Anas did. Do you agree? Yes, I do. I do because, you know, in Ghana, if you don't have evidence, mm. you can talk. You know, if you don't have, and that is what they've been saying. Where is your evidence? Where is your evidence? But sometimes you look at the person who is talking. I don't have the evidence, but me telling you that darling, something is going on here, you need to do your investigation to see if truly that thing is going on. Don't wait for me to go and bring you uh, evidence. evidence. I've said it. Actually, this guy is not a normal person to just say things anyhow. Yeah. So let's investigate and check what is going on down there. But if me, I'm like you, and you are telling me, how can you going to do that? Yeah. Alaji Gruza said, if you know you never give bribe before, <laughs> raise your hand. <laughs> did somebody raise his hand? Nobody did. Nobody did. A member came out saying that he bribed all the 24 matches or something for uh, uh, Razak. What happened to that person? Nothing. What happened to the club? Nothing. You understand me? So, these things, people take it like, oh, it's a joke. It's a joke. It's a joke. But it's not a joke. Now that is, <laughs> the evidence came out, yeah. we all see that, oh, okay, so what has been saying all this while? It's it true. is true. So, it's good. Whatever Essence is saying is true. Let's wrap up our interview in, a, in the next yeah. couple of minutes. Um, what do you think of the Black Stars, um, the current Black Stars? Can they win? We haven't won the, the Afcon in 30, 30 plus years. You didn't win it in your time. Yeah. We haven't won yeah. it after you, you left. Do you think this crop of players can do it? We can do it because they've been in the finals for so, I mean, for almost three, three times or something. Yeah, three, they've been in two times in the last yeah, 10 years, I think. Years. 2010, 2015. Yeah. So, they, 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 they're doing well. Though some of them are fading out. Yeah. But the replacement is, I think, is quite good. I hope that there will be no injuries and things like that. You know, the young ones are there. If... I would pray that maybe the senior ones can be, some of them can be fixed. Yeah. And then be in there just to control them, just to tell them what to do. Then gradually, you know, they will be fading out and then they'll go. But sometimes if they go out, bam, like that, it's not helping. Because they will, you know, nobody can control them. They will be like, yeah, 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 you know. Yeah. But if there is somebody in there controlling them, telling them, giving them advice, giving them, uh, I mean, motivations and things like that. Charlie, you can do it. Charlie, we have done it before. You can do it. Let's go. Man. That those things also can help them. And then but I think they can they can they can make it if only we will take good care of them. Okay. And respect them. We shouldn't be like, oh they are kids so we can do whatever we want to do with them. That one day I won't agree about that. Okay. Like I say we're wrapping up. What's your greatest regret in in, in your My career? Greatest regret I never won anything for the, for the nation. I never won anything junior side. I've not played in the junior side, so junior side is, but never won anything. So far as football is concerned, my greatest regret is that one. What's the happiest moment for you in your career? Wow. <laughs> I think my happiest moment is when I beat Galata Salari 1-0. Okay. Yeah, we beat them 1-0. And that game was, you know, our hell, because we played in our, their, their place and oh, okay. they, they, they were on, on fire. They beat Asna, European Cup final, and they beat Real Madrid, Champions of Champions. So wow. you can imagine the kind of team we are playing with. Yeah. And they had more than 20 something chances. We don't even had one. <laughs> and yet and then the, 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 the one foul, you know, everybody was looking this side. In the first half, second half, everybody was like this. Okay. So one time we go there and then we score free kick and I hit them. We score. That is the end of the game. So you're very excited. Yeah. That so that that game was. It's like we won the Champions League. 
you know, from our there to their place, it's like here to Osu. Okay. Or maybe so you're like uh, Labadi. The same city. It took us more than five hours. Traffic. Human the fans is walking in front of the bus. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> yeah, so that, that was a very uh, I mean, great moment in my career. Let's wrap up with your family. You still have wife, kids? No? No, I have okay. kids and no wife. Okay. But uh, I have a girlfriend. <laughs> oh, okay, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's good. I mean, footballers, they say people, you have a lot of choices. Oh, not all of us. Okay. Not all of us. Okay. No. So, finally, what would be your word of advice to young and upcoming players uh, in terms of how to sustain their careers for a long period of time? Sometimes you see a player, one tournament, he shines, the next, he's gone. Yeah, I think that my advice would be, like, first thing is to 